I was working in uh, Las Vegas. Guy came up to me after a show. He was, actually, he was dead serious. He goes, is it true, you natives in your travels, you're guided by outer voices? I'm like, uh, yes, sir. It's called a Google navigation system. <laughs> You know, you can change the voices on your GPS. I do it, I get bored on the road. I do that all the time. Put on the British guy the other day. You know, he's all formal, right? He's now entering the motorway. <laughs> Put on the French guy, he was a little sippy. He goes, you wanna go to Waco, Texas? Why you wanna go to Waco, Texas? <laughs> they added a Nigerian man to the GPS voices. This Nigerian guy tripped me out. He goes, you will go 3.1 miles. You will make a right turn into your bank parking lot. You will withdraw $7,500 and mail it to my uncle. <laughs> in Lagos, Nigeria. Okay, I will say this. Uh, GPS is ADD's greatest friend ever invented. Oh, thank God for GPS. I'll tell you what, GPS will tell you what to do every 10 seconds if you ask it to. I know that because I ask it to. GPS is like, in two miles, turn left. In one mile, turn left. In a half a mile, turn left. In a quarter mile, turn left. In an eighth of a mile, turn left. God, you're an idiot. Would you turn left? I said it five times. Here's something my GPS said to me two months ago. It said, in a quarter mile, continue straight. <laughs> now, some people might be offended by a command that simple. I was like, yeah, I was actually wondering if I should do that because you didn't say anything in a while. Sometimes I get there and I'm like, should I just keep going then? Yes, if I don't say anything, just keep going straight. He bought this thing at Walmart. It's a Garmin. It was $160. He put it in the window of the truck. It goes, turn right, turn left, turn right. Yeah, my wife does that for free. That's what GPS stands for, gal in the passenger seat. I know some of y'all are wanting to laugh at that. You can't, she's sitting right there. No, my wife has been so uh, supportive of me. She's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. We've been together uh, about 19, almost 20 years now. And uh, we don't fight a lot, which is awesome. You know, that's my favorite thing about it. We, we don't fight. The biggest thing we used to fight about was driving. And that was before, you know, GPS was there. It would just be my wife would yell at me that I didn't know where I was going. And now, thankfully, because of GPS, I have two women telling me I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> And they have, drive, they have uh, voice packages you can get for GPS. And I think they should have training packages for single people so they know what it's gonna be like when they're married. <laughs> like they could have the exasperated wife package. And that's where you miss a turn and it just goes. <sighs> <laughs> Rerouting. <laughs> Again. <laughs> right, and then they could have the stubborn husband package. That would be kind of fun. That's where you put an address into the system and a voice comes on and goes, I know where I'm going. And it shuts right off. <laughs> when we first got a car with uh, GPS in it, I remember my wife actually got into an argument with the computer. It was just kind of odd. It was like, turn left here. And my wife's like, ah, uh, no. It's like four more blocks, then you turn. What a waste of money. And I was like, yeah, but it says, so she's like, listen to me, I'm your wife, I know where I'm going, don't listen to that. And it's just awkward because you have this thing that's 100% accurate every single time. And then you have this GPS system. <laughs> now, if you uh, didn't get that, uh, <laughs> Big gang problem in L.A., really wasn't used to that, moving there from the Midwest, but uh, I was reading the paper where they got this new program over there to help keep kids out of gangs, which is cool. But here's what I noticed. Whenever I read in the paper about gangs shooting up a house, 90% of the time, it's the wrong house. So here's my idea for a program. GPS for gangbangers. Yeah, not a good joke, but a good program, right? And I start driving and I activate the GPS in the car, and it was a male voice. And I got my phone's a female, I never had a male voice. On the, and the little car was like, at the next intersection, turn left. I'm like, okay, Karth, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I think that the voice in the GPS should match the car. <laughs> 
So if they put a GPS into an Isuzu rodeo, I want it to go, I reckon you ought to turn left. <laughs> they put a GPS into a Ford Fiesta. Yo, gringo, you're in the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> no, you just need to like turn around. Put a GPS into a Dodge Diplomat. I think you should go left. What do you think? <laughs> a GPS into a Chevy Cavalier. Yeah, go left, go right, whatever. <laughs> Put a GPS into a Ford Escort, and then you have to pay $100 every time you want the directions. <laughs> this is just <laughs> awkward. They put a GPS into a Hummer. Should I go left? Mm-mm. <laughs> so right that mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, some of you guys are gonna get these on the way home, and that's you, it's fine. Just because I just go. Just go. Then they put a GPS into a Ford Spirit. Go left. L-E-F-T. Go left. Hey. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. This is weird. So I live out in LA, and uh, I hear that you also have traffic. Even, even you. Ah, oh, oh, wow. just it's, I guess it's epidemic. I, I've spent most of my adult life now trapped in gridlock. It's uh, I, I was trapped so long. I was going to San Diego the other day. I was sitting there so long. I started watching Frozen in the SUV next to me. <laughs> They went to get off. I'm like, no, you're all I've got. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. I drive everywhere and have no sense of direction. <laughs> it's just, it's just like, I don't even read the signs anymore. I just wait for the voice. Oh, I guess, all right. This guy was giving me the old school directions and he told me to head northeast. I'm like, oh, see, I don't do northeast. <laughs> I'm not a Boy Scout. I do left, and I do right. <laughs> and sometimes I recalculate. <laughs> and my dad's one of those guys who always wants to know, you know, which way you're headed. Are you taking the 210 to the 38? I'm like, no, see, my job is to stay on the blue line <laughs> until I see a checkered flag. That's where you live. <laughs> You know, all right, he goes, so, all right, well, which way are you headed now? I'm headed up, Dad. <laughs> Always up. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there's one thing I am grateful for with smartphones. It's the GPS. I don't know if you guys are paying attention to what's happening in society right now, but we are no longer lost. You never need to ask a stranger for directions. <laughs> Never really been a big fan of that phenomenon, right? Because you're lost, basically. When you reach out to a stranger, you're weak. You're vulnerable. You're willing to believe anything. <laughs> basically asking a stranger for directions is saying, uh, excuse me, random person, we've never met. But I'm willing to do what you tell me. <laughs> for the next two hours or so. So be cool, huh? Be cool. Yeah. And you always know the quality of the directions you're about to receive by the face the person makes right after you ask. Uh, excuse me, sir, could you tell me how to get to the art gallery? The art gallery? Ah. <laughs> But you started the conversation. You can't just, you know what, never mind. <laughs> no, no, where are you going? I know, I know where it is, I know where it is. I... Ah, okay, all right. My favorite is the people that will use their hands to somehow maximize 
the comprehension of their directions. Oh, the art gallery. <laughs> well, that's on the corner of Maple and Third. <laughs> okay, here's Maple. Okay. Then here's Third. It's at the corner of Maple and Third. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not from around here. Could I see your hands again? <laughs> ah, Maple and Third, yes. I'll just look for the giant class ring. Thank you. Uh, but like I said, I hadn't been here in a long time, so I had to use uh, the GPS to get here. Waze, anybody familiar with Waze? I love Waze. Waze is the fastest, right? Not the safest. <laughs> Found that out yesterday. Waze will have you going through alleys, backyards, somebody's house. Like, turn left at the sink. Cause it's spooky accurate, super, you'll be driving, it'll be like, object in road. And you'll look, there's an object right there in the road. And part of you is amazed by that technology. Then you freaked out like, where the hell are you? <laughs> to where you can see this Skittle in the road. <laughs> it's a small object. Spooky accurate, it'll be like, car on shoulder. Yo, look, there's a car right there on the shoulder, yo. Spooky accurate, because then it'll be like, crack deal, two blocks ahead. <laughs> Spooky accurate, because then it'll be like, better deal, two blocks south. <laughs> you got too much information up there. Did you guys know you could uh, download Morgan Freeman's voice? That's right, did as soon as I found out. <laughs> Why would you not? What kind of heartless person are you that you don't want Morgan Freeman telling you how to get to where you gotta go? <laughs> Be like, I'm Morgan Freeman. Let's go home. Let's pick up Andy Dufresne, too, bro. <laughs> Three people got that Shawshank reference. That's fine. That's fine. They'll edit it out. Anyway. I like that they can uh, customize the voices. I wish they could personalize it to you, because sometimes that voice is so automated that it throws you off as you're driving. You'll be driving, just enjoying it. Everybody, like, bing, turn left here. You're like, oh. That was my favorite part of the song. I like they personalize it. I, I think they should customize it to you, though, your personality. You know, that way when it comes on, it doesn't throw you off. You know, you're rolling down the street. Hey, player, turn left at the next corner. Okay. Okay. That's my dude. All right. You don't want to get one too personalized, though. You don't want to get one with, like, emotional problems. It don't take you where you want to go, it take you where you think you should go. <laughs> like, church, I didn't pick church. That's my point. What the hell? <laughs> my ex-girlfriend house, you know you still love her. Mind your business, GPS. <laughs> it's fine. The technology is great until it screws up, isn't it? You know, I flew into Pensacola not long ago and I, I rented a car and uh, at the rental car counter, the agent said, do you want a GPS? And I said, oh no, I have my phone. And as soon as I left the airport, my, my GPS started recalculating, taking me on wrong, wrong turns. And suddenly it started pouring rain and right in the middle of it, my mother called because she thought my plane had been hijacked. <laughs> So I said, Mom, let me call you back because my GPS is going berserk and I'm lost. And she goes, well, don't you have an atlas? <laughs> and I said, no, but I guess I could look for a pay phone and call and get directions. <laughs> or I know I could send up smoke signals. Maybe they'll send a wagon to come fetch me. Another cool piece of technology on the phone. I love the GPS system. I love that. That's the best. It's a little old school, but I love it, right? 
I love it because I travel a lot for comedy. I get lonely when I travel. But it feels like my wife is still in the car <laughs> with me when I go. You know what I mean? The minute you miss a turn, there she is, recalculating route, recalculating route. You never listen to me. Ba, 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 ba. This is very realistic. I like this. I think they need to update Garmin. They should give her like the silent treatment mode. I think that'd be kind of cool, you know what I mean? Right? Wouldn't that be cool? You make too many turns, there she is, all mad looking out the window. Just... What's wrong, Garmin? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh, I'm a little lost. Do I make her right up here? <laughs> you know everything. <laughs> so this is awesome. Good to have her back. Take her out to lunch. I get her in the car. She can hear the GPS. What's that all about? <laughs> she hears the GPS perfectly, although she doesn't know what it is. So all she does is go, what? What? Who's here? <laughs> Who keeps telling you where to go? <laughs> GPS, ma. Huh? Jesus? <laughs> yes, Jesus. <laughs> he doesn't like the way I'm going in life, so he wants me to make the next legal U-turn. So, <laughs> I'll be turning my life around in about 700 feet. <laughs> about life's little victories. You ever beat your GPS to a destination and just high-five yourself? <laughs> right, you ever just be like, yes, a minute early, take that, science. I'm unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> it is good to be here. Uh, last show, actually, I drove with my new lady friend, uh, but she was yelling at me the whole time. Yeah, she was like, recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. <laughs> I was like, shut up, Garmin. <laughs> she hates that because her name's Tom Tom. Now, listen, we're, here's the thing. And uh, this, is, this is an interesting thing because it was like, my ex-wife was, I was the constant joking type. She was the constant jealousy type. That was the whole problem right there. This, again, true story. Not making this up. This was back like when GPSs just started coming out. You know, the kind you just like stuck to the windshield, right? So I buy a GPS. My ex-wife was actually jealous of the woman's voice on my GPS. <laughs> I'm not making that up. She's like, why do you gotta use the woman's voice? I'm like, what do you think? It's some type of salacious guy thing? Because no man is turned on by a woman telling him how to drive. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, amen, yes. <laughs> yeah, so Paula Deen's not so bad after all, is she? <laughs> She's the next best thing to the Cracker Barrel, you guys. Oh, my GPS can find a Cracker Barrel anywhere in the country. I'm riding along and say, at the light, turn right, at the light, turn right. My little Surrey with her British accent, you know. Sometimes it's the French lady. She's like, Mademoiselle, at the intersection, make a U-turn. Mademoiselle, at the intersection, make a U-turn. That's in case someone get the French toast, right? You know? <laughs> Oh yeah, and then I got a southern guy, you drive down the road and he's like, Woo we're almost there. I'm like, oh. I got a redneck in my GPS, I love it. You turn down the frontage road and he's not recalculating, he's like, rethinking, rethinking, rethinking. 